Good morning everyone, it's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Isaiah chapter 30, verses 9 to 11, verse 18, and verse 21. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for the blessing of rain that you have given us. This morning, um, I just want to pray for those who had to go out in it first thing in this one, uh, first thing this morning that you do warm them up, you do keep them, you do dry them off <laughs> throughout the day, so they can have a pleasant day, dear Lord. And um, we want to thank you for the many other blessings that you are giving unto us. You have given us safety, you have given us food, shelter, protection, health, strength, given us love above all things dear lord to love you with our entire being and to love each other as you have taught you have given us the ultimate sacrifice through your son yeah that we can have remission of sin through you and that through him through our lord jesus christ we can have eternal life and our eternal kingdom with you forever if we abide with you and love you and to serve you with our whole life so there's many other things that we ought to be thankful of many so much so much more that um if we are to sit down and list them we will be praying without ceasing and we can understand why is prayer why your scripture says we should ought to be praying without ceasing because yes we should be in constant communion constant communication with you throughout our life so you can direct our paths dear lord and this is what we ask this morning it has to keep us on the straight and narrow path Keep us watchful of the things that are going on around us, not to be taken aware with the snares of the evil one, with the cares of this life, with the lust of the flesh, with the desires and lust of the eyes, or with the pride of life, but that we serve you in fullness with this mortal life that you have given us. Lord, as always, help each and every one of us in the faith that we do not be moved, nor that, nor that we stumble nor fall when we are faced with temptation, when we are faced with tests and trials and afflictions and persecutions, any such thing, or just griefs or anything like that, dear Lord, that we do not depart from the faith, but we hold fast to you that much more, knowing that this life is temporal, but with you, if we continue with you, we shall have eternal life with you. And dear Lord, as always, I just pray for our children, the young ones, ah, um, that, um, yeah, you just protect them, keep them safe from the evil one and use us who are aged to lead them on the right path, dear Lord, the straight and narrow, because we are all children in your eyes. And as you have given us commandment, so let us keep it to, to love you with everything and to love each other as you have taught. So lead us in your word this morning, in spirit and in truth. Give us the understanding that every word be spoken of you and by you and through you, through, even through your Holy Spirit, dear Lord. To the glory of our Heavenly Father, through you, by you, and for you, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Alright, cool. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 9 to 11 says, That this is a rebellious people, lying children, Children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Right? And then... Chapter verse 18 says, And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. And verse 21 says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Right? 
very nice scripture here the book of isaiah and isaiah was one of those prophets if we read the new testament he was referred back to quite a bit especially by jesus himself is like is it not written in the prophet isaiah such and such a thing and that I don't know much time you say, but we know definitely Isaiah, which in the New Testament is transliterated sometimes as Isaiah. It's been it's, it's it's mentioned quite a bit, right? I think would I say more than the rest of the prophets? Let's not say that, but I remember that specifically that Isaiah is referred to, and the reason why it's referred to because he did show a lot of um. Um, parallels with Christ when he was to come into the, in the flesh there was the prophecies his prophecies correlated with a lot um, a, a lot with the the, the t return of our Lord Jesus Christ that not that all prophecies because we know all prophecies does is the testimony of Jesus Christ but his ones were quite a bit where Jesus said he fulfilled them right so if we obviously this would have spoken to the time Isaiah was living in, it would have spoken to the time when Jesus came on the scene, and it even speaks in our day and age at the moment. Right? When we start off in verse 9 and say, This is a rebellious people, right? Lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Can definitely relate to that even now. Right? Um if you have children, for those who have children, there is no parent that would want the child to be, or children to be liars, right? Yes, that is one thing. Even people who might not know God or acknowledge God, they would not want the children to be a liar, right? They wouldn't want a child that does not listen to them. Although nowadays, um, I've seen where um the the parenting right right righteous parenting should i say so parenting uh, according to how god wants us to parent is frowned upon because now discipline is something that is is getting more and more foreign in 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 this day and age where um uh, and i always tell people i don't believe in abuse like abuse of, of physical abuse or anything but i believe in discipline there's a stark difference and in discipline there is sometimes chastisement because that's just what it is i grew up i got a slap here and there when i was rude i didn't just get it for no reason i knew the reason why i got it <laughs> i knew the reason why i got it my parents never just wake up and just slap me for no reason if i'd fought my brother's or my, my relatives or my siblings my, my brothers my brother I only have one brother or any or, or if I hurt my sisters or anything like that I know I'm going to get a spanking if I lie I'm definitely going to get a spanking um, or anything that was viewed wrong I would have gotten a spanking and it depends on the severity of it sometimes you can get correction just based on your word but if we are lying children, right, and do not want to hear, then we are not going to be those ones as verse, um, as verse nine said. We're not going to, be, we're not going to please the Lord, right? We can't please the Lord if we are lying children, or and if we don't want to obey Him, we're going to be unruly children, and a parent with unruly children not going to want it. He's going to still love them in so much He wants to bring them back to the righteousness, but He's not going to find any joy in that child. Because until that child comes back to him and serve the parent or honor that parent, those parents, then um, yeah, they're going to be looked upon as a rebellious child. It is what it is. Right? Um, so we see how we as children of God, well, children, according to that we are God's creation, we see where um, this, <laughs> this verse here is just showing you how blatant um we can be when we want to be rebellious right we will say to the seer see not to the prophets prophesy not 
unto us right things, you know, right? But speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. So that is showing you that those ones that the Lord has sent out to bring us back to him, we are telling them to, you know what? No, we don't want to hear not what the God wants. So just that we hear those things that tickle our ears, those things that make us feel good because we want to continue in our disobedience, right? And if you come with reproof, now we might get um, conf convicted or there will be a conflict of interest and we don't want that. We just want to hear the things that we want to hear. And we can see that sometime in, in certain organizations where the judgment of God is not spoken of. It's only the love of God. And what sometimes we may forget to, to acknowledge is that the judgment of God encompasses love. God has to be a just and God in order for him to be a loving God. Because if he wasn't a just God, how would he be how could he say he is the only just one if he doesn't reward good and repay evil for what they have done right think of all the atrocities and the evil that has happened in this world imagine that all those people now are just just fine like yeah they're so continue and yes yeah, fine i did all of that in this life hurt so many did so much evil but yeah it's fine let me just uh, let me just abide now in eternity in goodness Although I did all of that evil. No, God has to judge between good and evil. And he would punish evil and justify and reward good. Right? And if we look to it, at it in its finest detail, we see that every single one of us aren't good. Because each one of us has seen some point in this life. And is this and are, are needful. Well, we are deserving of punishment. But... The love of God through our Lord Jesus Christ has given us that grace and mercy in so much that we can have the righteousness of Christ Jesus if we follow him, if we give our lives to him and if we love him with our whole being and do what he says and to fulfill what he says in so much that we love one another as he has taught us, right? So we see these children here in verse 11, they're literally saying, get out of the way, move from before me pretty much right turn aside out of the path cause the holy one of israel to cease before us don't want to have nothing with um, our holy one don't want to have nothing with our lord jesus christ right we want to go our own path we want to go our own way come out of our way come out of our path we want to do our own thing i don't want you to be hindering us from or blocking us from going after our own path so if this was a straight and narrow and He's standing in the in the in the way of you departing from the straight and narrow. These re rebellious children here are telling this one to to come out the way. We don't want to hear nothing about our Lord. We want to do our own things, which is not good for us at the end of the day, hundred percent. But if we this chapter is so good, I only picked out a few verses, but read it in its entire context, because even verse 18 there, where I, uh, I pulled that out, is just to show you the love of God again, and show the long suffering of our Heavenly Father right, this parent if we look at it from a mortal's aspect, this parent is a parent that is always there looking and helping and trying to bring back that child into righteousness right so because verse 18 said and therefore will the lord wait and we know that waiting is like the biggest what one of the biggest characteristics of love like it always started off and said love is patience love is long suffering right this is these are two characteristics that speak of someone waiting right um and he said he, that he may be gracious unto you and therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy upon you for the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are they that wait for him. So it again shows you that he's waiting for those of us, the, rebell the rebellious children, to, to, move, uh, to move back to him, to come back to him and to... Um, to Sorry, I got distracted there. 
yeah, to come back to him. He's waiting for all of those children to come back to him because he has given all of us, as we always say, that maximum permissible time to, to come back unto him. He's such a loving God. But as I said, he's a just God and a God of judgment. And after the, he has given all of us that maximum permissible time, according to his will, he would have to judge according to how we operated in this life. Either we were for him or against him. And he already told us the consequences. It's not that we are there ignorant walking around not knowing the consequences of these things. Right? And um, verse 21 there just went and said, And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye have, when ye turn to the right hand, or and when ye turn to the left hand, and that is just showing how um our, our God, right? He would send, he sends prophets, he sends all of these um individuals there to help us, but ultimately he is the one, the light, the one that keeps us in the straight and narrow path, and he's always going to. Anytime we want to veer off to the left or veer off to the right, he's the one. Is like. He's always going to be there. No, no. He's always behind us, telling us right away. No. And he's lighting our past like, no, you're deviating, Jelani. You're deviating such and such. Come, come back, come back. All right. Jelani, you're deviating again. Come back, come back. You deviate. He's always going to be the one that is showing us where we are to be going and telling us. But if we are rebellious children, it's always going to be us. Those who are who, the rebellious children are always going to be those ones that are going to say, you know what? I don't want to hear of you. I just want to hear my own thing. Come out of my way. I want to go off with my own path. Right? We don't want this. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that this morning. It's just a nice little, um, as I said, read the whole thing. I only picked out a few verses there just to try to paint a picture of the whole chapter. But it's good to read the whole thing and ask the Lord for the understanding. So, I'll leave it at that this morning, everyone. As always, any questions, anything at all that you might want to know or what you want to say, send them into the word at eachreachone.org. It's in the description. And as much as the Lord has led me and kept me and taught me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his judgment, according to his will being led by his Holy Spirit. So have a blessed day, everyone. And God's willing, we'll catch up tomorrow.